Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go every, over everything you ever wanted to know. Well, maybe not everything, but most of the things you ever wanted to know or should know about an atom. What are atoms? All right? Everything that's surrounding you as you sit there watching this incredible video is made of atoms. Your computer, the table, the chair you might be sitting on, the clothes, even yourself is made of atoms. And let's look inside and see what atoms are. Well, if you look deep into the atom, you will notice at the center there is this thing, this core, this seed at the center, which we call the nucleus. In the nucleus, there are two things, positively charged protons, neutrally charged neutrons. So we have some positive things and some neutral things. You add those up, you add up those charges, and you find out that the nucleus overall, the overall charge on the nucleus is positive. Okay? Not because the nucleus is positive, because it has protons and neutrons, and when you add those up, the overall charge on the nucleus is positive. In the nucleus, there is over 99.9% .9 of an atom's mass. Well, where is that missing less than one-tenth percent of the mass? Well, it's in these things that go around the atom, which we call the energy level. All right. Now, there aren't really rings there, but these are the places where the electrons are. The electrons are in these energy levels. Sometimes we call them rings, sometimes we call them shells, sometimes we call them energy levels, sometimes we call them orbitals, but that's where the electrons are. The electrons have a negative charge. They're attracted, and that's what keeps them in the energy levels or keeps them from flying away. Their negative charge is attracted to the nucleus's positive charge. They're going very quickly, so they don't fall into the nucleus. But there's this kind of balance between the charge and the speed that keeps them flying around and around and around very, very quickly around the nucleus. Okay? Now we're going to talk more about these particles, the things that make up an atom, these subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, in a few moments. But let's just say some other fascinating, interesting things about the atom. Okay, now, this is the most common definition of an atom. It's the smallest thing that is still an element. If you think of the periodic table of the elements, gold, silver, copper, calcium, einsteinium, oxygen, uh, hydrogen, those are all the elements. In order for something to be an element, it has to be an atom. You have to have an atom of it. So it has to have a nucleus and electrons, protons, neutrons, and electrons. If you have just a proton, you really don't have an element. If you have just a neutron, you don't have an element. If you have just an electron, you don't have an element. In order for it to be an element, it has to be an atom. So it's the smallest particle, the smallest division of matter that is still an element. Okay? Now, also, they're the building blocks of matter. Like I said earlier, all the stuff that's around you is made of atoms, made of elements, excuse me, atoms of different elements. Put those elements together, like water, H2O, Okay, two hydrogens and, a, and an oxygen, two atoms of the element hydrogen and one atom of the element oxygen, and you get a molecule of water. So we snap those things together like Legos, and we get all the matter that's surrounding you. Okay, also they're mostly empty space. This is fascinating. You can see here we have this small nucleus. This space between the rings is empty. There's nothing there. And actually this is not really drawn to scale. If we were to draw this to scale, the nucleus would be much, 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 much smaller. And the way I like to think about it is if you look at your fist, look at your fist, my God, that's my fist, okay? If you made the nucleus that big, all right, then the first electron, the first energy level, would be hundreds of meters away. And between your fist and the first electron, there's nothing, empty space. Atoms are mostly empty space. Well, people all say, well, why can't you just put your hand through the table atom? It's mostly empty space. The reason is, atoms are so small. They're teeny, 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 teeny. There's so many atoms packed in there that you, your hand can't fit through that empty space. Even though it's mostly empty space, there's so many atoms, you can't put your hand through it. In fact, the diameter of an atom is about 1 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. That's like a, a 1 with about 11 zeros in front of it. And not behind it, but in front. So it would be point oh 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 one, something like that. They're teeny, teeny, teeny. They're so small. So small. If you take a piece of the width of your hair, people often say, you could put a million atoms side by side. It would be the same width as a single hair from your head. 
Okay? So those are all the things you should know about, the general things you should know about atoms. And now we're going to talk about some of the particles. And the particles we said earlier are protons, neutrons, and electrons. And let's start off with the proton. The proton, well, everybody knows, maybe not everybody knows, but a lot of people know a proton has a positive charge, a positive one charge. The charge on one proton is often considered the elementary charge of plus one. Where are they? Well, we said they're in the nucleus. They have a positive charge. They're in the nucleus. Now, they're so small. They're this small. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Minus 27. Now, that's like the one here, 1.67, with about 26 zeros in front of it. They're so small, you can't even really imagine how small that is. And it was really hard to work with. And it's such a kind of a cumbersome number, all that scientific notation. So what scientists did was they decided, well, we'll take the mass of a proton, and as we'll see, the mass of a nu neutron, and we'll say that they that is what we call an elementary mass or one atomic mass unit. That number, 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27, scientists decided that's like one basic unit of mass when we talk about atoms and protons and neutrons and electrons. The mass of a proton is one atomic mass unit. And protons, their importance is that they identify what kind of atom we have. All right, The number of protons in the nucleus tells you what kind of atom you have. That is what we call the atomic number. Hydrogen has one proton in its nucleus. All atoms with one proton are hydrogen. Okay, So that tells you the identity of an atom that is what we call the atomic number. OK, neutrons. Well, what's the charge on a neutron? The charge on a neutron is 0. It has a neutral charge. Where are they? Well, they're also in the nucleus. Along with the protons, they're in the nucleus. Now, their mass is the same mass, approximately, of a proton, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. That is a really small mass. So once again, we said that their mass is equal to, so we can kind of think of it as like a regular number, one atomic mass unit, AMU, atomic mass unit. Now, what do they do? What is their importance? Well, they hold together the nucleus. It's believed that they kind of mediate the strong nuclear force. You have all those protons in the nucleus. Well, all the protons are positively charged. All those positive, they want to fly away from each other. Well, the neutrons are basically in there holding on to the protons and not letting the protons fly away. So they kind of hold the nucleus together. They mediate what we often refer to as the strong nuclear force. OK, so that's the protons, the neutrons, and now the last thing is the electrons. Now, electrons. Electrons have a minus one charge. Protons plus one, neutrons neutral, electrons negative one. They are outside the nucleus. They're in the electron cloud, they're in the shells, they're in the rings, they're in the energy levels, they're in the orbitals, but they're not in the nucleus, so we kind of just say, oh, they're outside the nucleus, okay? Now, their mass is even less. The other one was 10 to the minus 27, the protons and the neutrons. The electrons have a mass of 10 to the minus 31. That is so much smaller. It doesn't really seem that much smaller. 27, 31, that's, that's not that big difference. But the uh, mass of an electron is almost 2,000 times less than the mass of the proton and the neutron. So oftentimes, we don't even really count the mass, really. So we often say that they have an atomic mass, or their mass is zero. We don't even really consider their mass, because the protons and the neutrons are so much more massive. OK? and the electrons are involved in chemical bonding. It's really the electrons and the interaction between the electrons from one atom and the positively, the negatively charged electrons of one atom and the positively charged nucleus of another atom that holds chemical bonds together, that holds atoms together, that makes chemical bonds, that makes all the things that surround us. Okay? So those are kind of the four things, the charge, the location, the mass, and the importance that you should know for each of those things, the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. OK, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you can give me a thumbs up or a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.